Adam here with Invisible Pan Studios. I'm here at Discover Games to talk about brushes and how they relate to miniature painting and hobbying in general. So let's check it out. First things first, we need to look at the composition or anatomy of the tools we use so we have a general understanding of the simple terminology. With this diagram, we see parts of a typical round style brush, the most prevalent style used in the minis that I paint. Starting with the bristles themselves, they make up the brush head. The tip or the toe is pretty self-explanatory. It's the drawn point of all the bristles where your paint is directly applied to whatever surface you're working on. Next, we have the belly. The belly of the brush is where the paint is absorbed and stored once it's applied to the brush from the palette. The belly is also the fattest part of the brush head. Think of it like a quill style pen where the ink is drawn up and depletes when used. Not all round style brushes that we have have a large or noticeable belly. We're going to get to that. Moving down the brush, we have the ferrule. This is the metal band that stores the heel or the end of the bristles and secures the brush head to the handle. It's attached to the handle with a crimp. Quality brushes use better quality metals like brass or copper alloy with a double or a triple crimp. This connection is extremely important otherwise the bristles can fall out of the ferrule and the ferrule can detach from the handle. Lastly we have the handle itself. It's often made of hardwoods like beech, poplar, or maple. Some are acrylic, plastic, and even bone. Usually stamped along the side, you should find the size, type, or manufacturer of the brush. Now that we have a brief understanding of how a brush is assembled, we'll take a quick look at a few of the various styles. Here you can see we have a fan, oval, sword, angle, flat, bright, filbert, rigor or liner, and the round. Since we know what makes a brush tick, let's go over the two types you'll encounter when selecting one to paint your minis. Synthetic and natural hair brushes. Synthetic are typically made from nylon, polyester, or a blend of synthetic fibers and natural hair. These brushes are often treated and have their bristles dyed or baked. This is done to increase their performance. It can also make them softer as well as more absorbent. Synthetic brushes are usually way cheaper than their natural hair counterparts, making them ideal for keeping several on hand or easily trashing when the tip gives out. The next type we have are natural brushes. They're comprised of loads of different animal hairs, either individually or a blend. Some natural brushes also contain synthetic blends. Animal hairs in these types include badger, camel, hogs, Mongoose, ox, ponies, squirrels, the sable, and a Kalinsky, aka the Kalinsky sable. The last two are often misnomers, but for our interests, we're going to focus on those. The sable is a marten. It's an indigenous animal located in Russia, Siberia, Mongolia. It's basically a Siberian weasel-like creature. However, due to its conservation efforts, less and less of its fur goes into actual brush making anymore. In its stead are true Siberian weasels that very often get the mislabel applied to the finished product and are sold as sable or red sable. Lastly we have the Kalinsky, also known as the Siberian mink. This is a species of weasel that produce the finest brushes in the world. The hair is taken from the tails and of these the best of the best come from the male Kalinsky. However most true Kalinsky sable brushes are a 60-40 mix of male to female. Now we have a general understanding of what goes into a brush. Let's go over some of the pros and cons of each type. Understand this first. The synthetic and natural hair brushes I typically use for miniature painting are mostly designed for watercolor and oils. They're not designed for acrylic polymers or resins, so your mileage may vary on brush life or results. Starting with the synthetics first. For years I used them exclusively. They're cheap, I got lots of good results. You can get huge packs for less than $10, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, or your hobby store of choice. It doesn't hurt your feelings to toss one that just gets ruined or when they lose their tip. These brushes can be your workhorse for base coating, washing, or dry brushing. And I personally use synthetic natural hair blends for inks and my metallics. 
The downside is that these brushes can go downhill pretty quick. So don't get attached because they'll not last forever. Once they start to split, it's time to call in the backup. They can be saved to a degree, but once they start to get weird, it's the beginning of the end. For me, Kalinsky Sable is where it's at. The craftsmanship of the brushes that I use are exquisite. They have razor sharp tips, nice big bellies, and quality components. Remember when I said that not all round styles have a large and noticeable belly? Well, most of the synthetics I've used don't. They're often triangular from toe to heel, and this requires more trips to the palette and shortens the life of the brush much quicker. With a good Kalinsky Sable, I'm able to paint more with that nice belly to keep the brush loaded. Kalinskys also have a wonderful bounce or spring. Essentially, this is the tension between the bristles and the miniature. It's a nice firm pressure without being too soft or collapsing, or too hard with no give. Synthetics can mimic that bounce or spring, but it varies too much to be consistently beneficial. Lastly is price and maintenance. Some of these Kalinsky Sables I use can be pretty expensive, upwards of $20 to $30 each. It's an investment that's not worth it to everyone, but these brushes certainly need care. They have to be maintained or they'll fail just as fast as synthetics. However, with said care done properly, they'll last many years, far outweighing the need to buy multiple sets of synthetic brushes as your main brush. With most things in life, all this is totally subjective. There is no correct brush, no correct tool, there's no correct way of doing things. I know artists who have great success with cheap brushes. I also know that having the most expensive tools doesn't automatically make you a good artist. It all lies in what fun comes of it. This is a big colorful hobby and I just know it works for me and I hope that helps you along the way. Stay tuned for part two as I showcase my personal brushes and the reasons I've picked them and I'll show you how to clean them Keep them nice and tidy and get as long a life out of them as possible. This is Adam from Invisible Hand Studios. Find me on Facebook. Be sure to also check out Discover Games, discover-games.net. Stay tuned for more videos.